Dimension Force sneak peek is this weekend where we're we'll talking about the top 10 cards in Dimension Force that you're either going to want to keep an eye on or will have a general impact on the metagame. Don't beg 30% of you guys to not smash the crap out of that subscribe button. Smash it so we can climb up to 106,000. All right. Number one on our list here is going to be Sylvan Dan Sfiona. You're probably like, really? The Plant Link Monster Abbey? You're putting this at number 10? Well, I thought about putting Dia Note here, and I thought about putting the... Um, little water tuner guy that becomes level eight here as well. But I think that this surpasses both of those in terms of application. On Link Summon, you choose a number one to three. Excavate that many cards from the top of your deck. And if you do, special summon up to two excavated plant monsters, but they cannot be used as Link material. Also, send the remaining cards to the graveyard. You can target one plant monster in your graveyard that has a level. Level of the monsters, this card points to becomes that monster's level till the end of the turn. Hmm. I've seen some Sun Avalon shenanigans with this card. Uh, this is one of the cool new pieces that plants get here. And do not underestimate what that plant engine can do because lurking in the depths, it's definitely still there. Number two on our list here is Exosisters Magnifica. So remember, this is two rank four Exosister Exceed Monsters. You have to exceed something with the above materials, which is big old stinky. Zeus exists, by the way. Gets a second attack during each battle phase. And then quick effect, detach material from this card, banish one card your opponent controls. That's pretty good. When your opponent activates a card or effect, quick effect, return one Exceed Monster. You won't attach this card to your extra deck. And then you can swap to summon that monster from the extra deck. By using this card as material. Basically, it just gives you a quick like rotation between these. It's a little bit harder to summon, but looking further, further down the pipeline here, once splites come out here, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking that far down the pipeline here. This is one of those cards that the OCG actually gets to play and abuse. And honestly, it is a very nice combo extender to the already pretty good Exosister anti-meta deck. So once we get further down the line here, you will get the chance to see this impact a lot harder. Next up is Psychic and Punisher. Ah, man. On the level 11 synchro, that literally reads, while your life points less than or equal to your opponents, it's unaffected. Yeah. Um, I've already seen a lot of people turn heads going, ah, Psychic and Punisher, I hate that card. I mean, yeah, it's completely generic, but this is once again what happens in Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, like, we start to power creep out previous boss monsters. And then this also thing also says, once per turn, this is not a quick effect. You can pay a thousand life points, target one monster you control, and one card your opponent controls, banish them. At the start of the battle phase, you can make this card gain attack equal to the difference in your life points and your opponents. Huh. You know, big monster... Get to bigger, very scary. Um, is there like a good way to like handle this? I mean, 3,500 attack points is a very huge thing, especially like if you're just down losing the entire game. If your opponent can pull this off, oh boy. Next up is Illegal Knight. Well, this honestly is dependent on an entire ban list here. We have been on the massive premise as of late that whatever happens to the adventure package. Uh, will depend on Illegal Knight's playability. If you ban Griffin Rider, all right, Illegal Knight steps right up and fills the void. During the main phase, ah, if you control no monsters or your opponent control, or you control an adventure token, so I'll summon this from my hand. Oh boy, it's literally Griffin Rider. If you control an adventure token, quick effect, target up to two cards your opponent controls. You pass control of this guy over to your opponent, and then you return the other two cards to the hand. Hmm. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. I think this card is busted. Uh, the fact that we got one more piece in the giant cog that is the toolbox for the good stuff here, I really do think that this makes the whole adventure package 1% more deadly, and that's definitely something you got to be worried about here as we go forward here. Next up is the Predaplant Fusion. You're like, really? You're, you're putting the Predaplant Fusion here? I don't know if you guys know this or not, but this is a giant instant fusion target. But it's two Predaplant monsters to make it. So, entirely generic in the entire Predaplant deck. If this card is fusion, so I mean, you add a Predaplant monster or a Predapt Spell Trap card from your deck, graveyard, or face them from your deck to your hand. It pulls from everywhere, right? And then, of course, you can target one monster your opponent controls, and then with a Predator counter or one monster you control, tribute it and do special summon a Predaplant monster from your deck. Holy utility, Batman. This card is the nuts. The fact that you get to search anything that is within the archetype is nuts. 
All right, seeing the fact that, you know, you get to search for probably the best print app spell and trap card. Thank you, Legendary Duelist. Hopefully the reprint will be around the corner here. But I think that this possibly will be one of the more interesting Albaz variants that we'll get to see here in the future. Next up is Beyond the Pendulum. Hey, hi, Electromite's replacement. How are you? Be a real shame if you know we could actually have Electromite back. But I don't foresee that. If this card is linked, summon to the extra monster zone, pay 1,200 light points, add a pendulum monster from your deck to your hand. But you lock yourself unless you pendulum summon after this effect resolves. All right? No monster effects. All right? And the effects of any cards in your pendulum zone are negate seed. All right. If two monsters with different original levels are pendulum summoned at the same time to your zones this card points to, and target two cards on the field and destroy them. First of all, that destruction effect is really underrated. I think a lot of people are like, well, you know, you got to pay 1200 and then you lock yourself after this the you perform pendulum summon. Okay. Who cares? All right? Like, you're going first. Your entire deck's ability is to want to combo. If no combo, no no gumbo, all right? Game over. All right, like, unfortunately, there's nothing else you can do at that point in time. So, temporary locking yourself is fine. This card is very, very solid, though. Next up is Thurian's King Regulux. Hey, did you know that machines finally, Sky Strikers, Earthbox, ABC, all get the card they've been waiting for? Ah, Target a Thurion's monster or machine monster in your graveyard, special summon this guy, and then equip that hunk of junk to this thing. Okay. When your opponent activates a card or a quick effect, you can summon a Thurion's monster from hand or face up on the field of the graveyard to get that effect. Oh. He just lugs himself on over there. Well, in ABC, I can special summon the piece I just equipped, right? And then he can just eat himself. Oh. Oh, a Thurian monster equipped with this card gains 700 attack and can activate the second effect listed above as if it were Regulux. I'm looking at this card as an entirely generic option, and I'm going to be honest with you. Um, this card is very scary. All right, you'll you'll understand like once playtesting and stuff happens and you start to mess around against these two decks, but it's very scary. Next up here is going to be Rextra, but I also got to give a shout out to our trap card, the thing that makes you able to summon this during the opponent's turn. So, Mister Rextrum here is a Dynamorphia Fusion monster plus any Dynamorphia monster. The trap card will let you basically step into Congrina during the opponent's main phase, use Congrina's effect to blow down, and then Rextrum will give you the ability to go to a thousand light points. But we'll get to that here in a second. Uh, the main thing that you control about is uh, your opponent can activate the effects of monsters they control that have attack greater than or equal to your life points. That's actually the thing that makes Dynamorphia such an interesting deck is your life points are your resource but you need to get them low enough. Having a generic floodgate that turns off your opponent while you're at a thousand light points that you can get to, it's literally just <laughs> FPS simulator, but you know, <laughs> eat yourself. A real interesting mechanic in the game, but I will say it's definitely one of the more powerful monsters in the game for sure for this set. Next up is Albalenitis, the Abyss King. Now for all of you guys that are like, one Fallen Valbass plus a dra one plus Dragon Monster? What do you mean that says one plus Dragon Monster? Hi, this is what we call the Anti-Fun Dragon Link card. Cannot be used as fusion material. Must either be fusion summoned or special summoned by sending the above cards from the Monster Zones to the graveyard. Yeah, baby, we can contact fusion out. Set that Albaz. All right, this card can attack all monsters up to the number of times. <laughs> each battle phase, up to the number of materials used for it. Uh-huh. Two, three attacks? Sure. Once returned during the end phase, if this card is in your graveyard because it was sent there this turn, you got a polymerization normal spell card or a fusion normal spell card from deck to your hand. Huh. That, that last line is very good. You know, you just yeet this off of your uh, your good old Mirror Jade, get a free search of a busted-ass fusion destiny. Good times. And the best card in the set here is actually branded banishment. So, how do you guys like Brandon and Red? Well, what if we could target a Despia monster or a level eight or higher fusion monster in our graveyard, special summon it, and then we can apply the following effect. Fusion summon a level eight or higher fusion monster from your deck by banishing fusion materials listed on it from either field. Either field? This is the mirror match slayer here. All right, the fact that I can bring back any Despia or a level eight or higher fusion monster, and then I get the ability to smash fuse with the opponent's field 
going to be a fun time out here. I can't wait to see like the application and things that branded banishment or exile will bring to the table here. It's going to be a very interesting time. So what do you think about this list of top cards to pick up out of, you guessed it, Dimension Force. Please, so you've comment down below to make sure you guys smash the crap out of that subscribe button. So you guys don't miss out more off content. I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.